Yo, what is going on guys? We are here with the lottery mock draft way too early edition of my channel. So right before we begin, let me hear your opinions down below. And all I ask is that you guys stay to the end of the video for my watch time to go up because that's all YouTube cares about. So let's hop in the NBA mock draft. Let's go. So this is if the mock draft or the lottery goes to the Golden State Warriors as the number one picks. The optics when it comes to James Wiseman are about as good as you'll find in this year's draft class. He has the kind of size and length which is equipped with a 7 foot 6 wingspan and the overall athleticism makes him a natural fit in the direction that the NBA is heading. And while he has shown signs of inconsistency, it gives one reason to wonder if he should indeed be the top overall pick. Pairing him with an established core like the one the Golden State Warriors already have will help him be able to perform from day one without the pressure being on his shoulders. With that being said, imagine a lineup of Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, either Draymond Green or Eric Pascal, and James Wiseman. That's automatically like five players, and James Wiseman would be in one of the best teams to be able to develop into a great player and to be a great fit so this is like he's not the best player in the draft but he's the perfect fit for the golden state warriors right now with the second pick in the NBA draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers will select Anthony Edwards. So much time has passed since the end of the college basketball season. Picking up part of player's game is so popular as a pastime right now. Edwards has a lot to learn about being great as a player at the next level. As he wasn't a good free throw shooter, only shooting 58% at Georgia, and his movement without the ball leaves a lot to be desired. But there's no better scorer in this year's NBA draft than Anthony Edwards, who gets to the rim unlike anyone else in this year's draft. The Cavaliers need many players different types of players, but Anthony Edwards is a player that could fit in between either Colin Sexton and Darius Garland and immediately make an impact, okay? The last time the Cleveland Cavaliers drafted a player who had not like an insanely spectacular, but was the best scorer in college basketball was Kyrie Irving. And look how that ended up. He can be an immediate impact player just like Kyrie was when he came to the Cavs in 2012. <laughs> As a Minnesota Timberwolves fan, this pick was hard, but the third pick I think should be Obi Toppin. Few players in college basketball turned games into a one-man slam dunk contest the way Obi Toppin did this past season. His ability to run the floor at an above average level allows him to fit into about any system. He's a better three-point shooter than he's been given credit as he connected on 39% of his threes last season while averaging 2.6 attempts per game. So imagine him with our boy Cat and D'Angelo Russell. Obviously, if Anthony Edwards falls to the third pick, I think Anthony Edwards should be chosen over Obi Toppin, but this is if Anthony Edwards and James Wiseman go off the board. Imagine having Obi Toppin right here, okay? Obviously, if Anthony Edwards is here, I think Anthony Edwards should be chosen, but Obi Toppin catching as the third guy for Cat and D'Angelo Russell would be phenomenal. Obviously, LaMelo Ball could be an option, but I, I just think D'Angelo Russell would not be a good two or nor would Le Lamello. So obviously Obi Toppin if Anthony gets picked. Oh, this comparison is going to get a lot of hate. Atlanta Hawks should definitely draft this guy to replace Clint Capella or, you know, mentor. And then once his contract expires to replace him. So Anekia Okongu. Okay, reminds me of what Biznak Biombo did in the 2016 to 2015 playoff or 2015-2016 playoff as his floor. Okay, so imagine this insane shot blocking seems like the second coming of Matumbo, but can eventually add a jumper. Okay, Okongo gives the Hawks a versatile low post defender with elite shot blocking potential who not only addresses a weakness of the Hawks, but whose presence will amplify the play of Atlanta's two best players, Trey Young and John Collins. So once Clint Capella's contract runs up, you got yourself right there, Okongo, whose floor is like a Bismack Biombo, 2015-2016 playoffs player, and his ceiling is Matambo with a jump shot. I think that's something we'll really be excited for. The biggest name in the draft, LaMelo Ball. 
Going to the Detroit Pistons, in my opinion. The new Pistons GM, Troy Weaver, will look to make an immediate splash with this pick. And of the players available at this point, there is none with more superstar potential than LaMelo Ball. And remember, Weaver is the same guy who convinced Carmelo Anthony to go to Syracuse and pushed hard for OKC to draft Russell Westbrook much earlier than expected in the draft. So, with that being said, this guy has a great eye for talent, the Detroit Pistons, who they have as their current general manager. Plus, they need a name, like Blake Griffin. Yeah, he might sell attendance, might sell tickets, but if you put Lamel back, oh, back there, I swear your opening game will be sold out. Not even gonna lie that this team might be even a playoff contention team. I feel like he could have a Ja Morant impact and be an immediate contributor to this team to help them go up to maybe being an eighth and seventh seed, which we have not seen the Detroit Pistons do in a long time. Troy Weaver, make that pick. Yeah, I love that. I finally pre uh, pre learned how to pronounce that if I learned how to speak. Denny Adia will likely get booed by the Knicks fan, who would much rather see Cole Anthony, whose dad Greg Anthony played for the Knicks in the 90s and some of the 2000s, I think. But the originally born wing has legit NBA playmaking skills, which will allow him to see the floor with the Knicks and pass to his player, be this point for her. And when he plays, it's kind of brash, trash talking confidence that will serve him well as part of the Knicks continuing rebuilding process. Think the Israeli and Luka Doncic, okay? Uh, people are probably gonna be like, uh, you're talking about Luka Doncic and Denny Adia. Adia is just insane. He's this point forward. He, his, you know, LeBron isn't a scorer, but his first thing is passing. That's how Denny Adia is. His first thing's playmaking. Then he's a scorer and he's an above average average defender so he has he makes hustle but he trash talks he has that swagger okay i think denny idea could be the thing for the knicks last guy since christoph porzingis obviously isaac okoro i've been talking about this guy for so much literally his ceiling is 2011 to 2015 andre iguodala okay perennial all defensive player with really good like he's more of a defender than score but he can score to average like 15 points a game and his floor is obviously michael kidd grill chris jr i don't know why i said jr michael kidd chris kill grill, grill, blah, blah. mkg defensively has all the elite potential whether it be pick and rolls man to man or switching out on big mans or guards his game at the other end of the floor needs work obviously he shot 28.6 percent from three with most of his basket coming from point blank range, shots he'll unlikely get consistently at the NBA level. Again, he is an athletic freak. So with that being said, I, I think again, he could be developed into like an Andre Iguodala type player, or if he doesn't develop his offensive game, he'll be Michael Kidd, Gilchrist. There, I almost said junior again, I don't know why, but that's it. Ong. Is it wrong that I hype up these players? No. RJ Hampton, I love this guy. The tools you love in a prospect, length, size, athleticism, are all there when it comes to RJ Hampton. He has a sweet spot on the floor, going to the right, catch and shoot, finishing at the rim, and knows how to get there consistently. For a team like the Hornets, adding another wing scorer has to be the priority in this draft, with Hampton being arguably the best on the board at this point, who could play either the point guard position or the combo guard position, even though I think he's a combo guard with point guard skills. That being said, I don't think Malik Monk's that good. I love, love Devontae Graham as I go to the University of Kansas. And, you know, I don't know if they're going to retain him, but if they do, imagine a backcourt RJ Hampton and Devontae Graham or Terry Rozier. I feel like that's really good. I think Malik Monk's just a bust, and I don't have faith in Malik Monk. So if I was done, I would give up on Malik Monk. Or just He'll probably be just another shooter. He's just a shooter. And I think RJ Hampton has more potential, or higher potential in this case. So I call this guy Sean Livingston with a jump shot. And if the Washington Wizards are trying to get up John Wall's contract, like buy it out, the Wizards have little choice but to make Bradley Beal more of a facilitator with John Wall out. But the addition of Hal Burton not only provides with some much needed versatility in the backcourt, but also a guard who can play both spots as well as a wing because of his seven foot wingspan. Obviously, he needs to get some strength. He'll get that once he's on those NBA PEDs. But however long John Wall's out for, we don't we don't know how he's gonna be when he comes back. So if John Wall sucks, you can buy him out and you got a new point guard. 
But if he comes back and he's really good, you got a really good point forward or a good player to use in a trade to get a better, more established player to push for an NBA, become an NBA contention team. There's a lot you could do with Tyrese Halliburton, but I think of all players at this point available, Tyrese Halliburton's the best fit and best player to immediately impact the Washington Wizards right now. So I wrote an article or, you know, post on NBA Reddit and I got ripped for saying Kelly and Hayes reminds me of Kobe Bryant because both of them spent their whole youth around the EuroLeague and international basketball scene because both their fathers played international basketball. Kelly and Hayes, a 6'5 guard, will be awfully tempting for the Suns to take Cole Anthony over him here, but the versatility and the upside Hayes brings to the floor will be too tempting to pass up. He has shown himself to be at his best attacking the rim. The kind of player will benefit from being on the floor with one of the league's best shooters, Devin Booker, whose presence will create some opportunities for his teammates to make plays at the rim. His def- defense has shown signs of being solid at the next level, as he has all the physical skills to be good there, and, you know, he has the right effort. He just needs to be toned like honed and like you know shaped into a good one but yeah Kelly Hayes I think has the potential to be really really above average to just right below all-star level point guard kind of remind me of like a Tony Parker type player and he played in the second league or second tier of German basketball this man just came out of nowhere Precious Achua is just a great player. The San Antonio Spurs have a squad of above average scorers besides LaMarcus Aldridge and DeMar DeRozan, but they lack a blue collar gritty type player that they've always had. And most teams don't want to get him in the lottery, but they need him. Achua is that kind of player and despite being 6'9", can play much bigger than his size courtesy of his 7'2 wingspan. This guy is just, if you're looking for a guy the San Antonio Spurs would love, he is. He reminds me of what the what what was it the memphis had memphis grizzlies had when they had paul gasol zach Tom, randolph that type of gritty player and he's perfect for the san antonio spurs to put a center next to lamarcus aldridge who will just be a defensive presence and just help greg popovich implement his system that he loves he's a perfect player for greg popovich's system all in all and can develop really well in the san antonio's team Sadiq Bey is, if not one of, if not the best defender in this draft behind is Zayek Okoro. Building around a team like, my apologies, Sacramento Kings, they need a guy like Bay, one of the best shooters in the draft whose presence can help create even more opportunities for DeAndre Fox and Marvin Bagley to do what they get best and get buckets. If you heard a little bump, that was me hitting my microphone. But yeah, okay, a team like the Sacramento Kings need a shooter if Buddy Heald leaves net or a shooter next to buddy healed at the small forward position who can space the floor for marvin bagley and deandre fox okay you got barnagovich barnagovich sadiq bay then you got buddy healed then fox and bagley imagine that lineup that's a playoff lineup for the sacramento kings it's 10 o'clock if you guys did not know that and you just heard my computer but yeah a team like that for the sacramento kings or a player like that would help the sacramento kings go and be a playoff team i'm like hiccuping right now i don't know why In my opinion, Devin Vassell could be one of the better players in this draft, a more athletic Clay Thompson. Much of the offensive load falls onto the shoulders of Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram, though, who both excel at scoring from the perimeter. Well, except Zion, he's more of inside. Vassell's long arms give them a wing who could get easy buckets and transition, transition, as well as a player with the potential to be an above average NBA defender with an offensive game that shows the promise that he will evolve into a solid two-way player. Again, Devin Vassell, 6'7". I know he's only 170 pounds soaking wet. I'm 160 pounds, 65 pounds soaking wet at 5'11". So that guy needs to put on some muscle. But imagine him in New Orleans lineup next to Lonzo, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, and whatever center they run. But him at the shooting guard position gives that team so much length and another shooter and another capable defender that they will be just an insane 3 and D transition team.
If you follow me, you know how much I love Patrick Williams and a team like the Portland Trailblazers who have CJ McCollum and Damian Lillard as their lead scorer need a guy like this. An excellent team defender who will likely spend most of his time early in his career defending fours and small ball fives. He shows the potential to be a solid catch and shoot scorer whose pick and roll potential either scoring the ball or passing out to bodies who will go well for a team that selects him. Like imagine just him playing the three or four for the Portland Trail Blazers and kicking out a Damon Lillard or CJ McCollum kicking out to him and him standing there at the top of the key or top of the arc and just poof, tray, tray. And he can also slam down, but he can defend two through four, okay? He can defend small forwards, shooting guards, power forwards, and some small ball centers, okay? Imagine putting him up against P.J. Tucker. That will be a good thing. Portland needs a guy like this. He's perfect. He's perfect. He'll look great in a Portland Trailblazers uniform besides that. Patrick Williams needs to go to the Portland Trailblazers. The Orlando Magics will select Jaden McDaniels. He will certainly need to add strength in the coming years, but the shooting touch and length as a perimeter player makes him this low risk and high reward player at this point in the draft. Orlando would love to have him next to Nikola Vucevic. I don't even know what Aaron Gordon is. I don't even know. Move him to the center position, get rid of Vucevic if he doesn't want to get paid or doesn't want to stay in Orlando. I don't know. I, I just, the Magics have players that just don't work. I think Jay McDaniels would go great next to Jonathan Isaac and whoever their center is. I just think Aaron Gordon and Vujovic need to leave Mark Kelfoltz and Jonathan Isaacs and move forward. But Jane McDaniels would pair perfect with a lengthy defensive 3 and D type team that scores on transition, which the modern NBA loves. So why not let that happen? Okay. But that's pretty much it for the video. I, I really don't have much else to talk about. But that's it, guys. I really hope you guys did enjoy this video. Leave a like. If you guys stay to the end, subscribe, comment. As always, guys, I hope you guys have a great day because I know I will. Till next time, guys. Peace out.